My name is Eileen Wald. I'm from Hague, North Dakota. We are out on our farm here, just about a mile out of Hague. And did you grow up on a farm? Yes, I did. A farm probably eight miles from here, between Hague and Strasburg. And we did dairy and just small grains also, and cattle of stock cows and dairy cows. But I grew up on a farm, yes. Lots of chickens, <laughs> yes. How many people were in your family? There's nine of us. I'm number seven of nine of us. So yeah, there was plenty to do. So with that many children, I'm sorry, you still had to do chores around the farm, did you? We all had our chores and feeding everybody is also another chore. But yes, in the summertime, my sisters and I always talk how every day was consumed with either laundry and we didn't have an automatic washer. We had laundry with the conventional and it was either laundry was one day and butchering chickens was one day, painting buildings was one day and picking rocks was always fit, fit in there somewhere. And then also the other variety of field work that needed to be done like hauling bales. We did square bales. Everybody I think back then had to do square bales if you had cattle. So there was alfalfa season and there was straw season. So yeah, did a lot of that kind of stuff. And when, where did you go to school? Strasburg. Yep, went to school at Strasburg. We attended church in Hague, but um, and our address was always Hague, but we went to school at Strasburg. And what type of activities were you involved with when you went to school? We didn't get to do a lot of extracurricular activities. We were always asked if we can go out for this or that, but it was always a season at home that it was fall. It was always, no, that would go into silage cutting or this kind of stuff. And so, I mean, we were, um, I was involved in band and choir and things like that. But um, yeah, didn't do a lot of the sports. So was, did you feel a little bit isolated because you were out on the farm and the town kids got to do other things? Yeah, we did. We always talked about, and we still say it, that we actually couldn't wait for school to start again in the fall because we were so tired of the work and you didn't see anybody all summer long. You were home and, and did your chores and your day-to-day -day activity, but we kind of looked forward to going back to school again where now the kids aren't crazy about going back to school, but we actually looked forward to it. When you were, when you were a smaller child, did, um, did you, uh, a lot of the older women talk about going to town on Saturday night and, and the only time they got to town. Was that something that you experienced? Not for me, but my mom talks about it when um, the older kids than I, and when she had little kids, she would say how they would go in, or sometimes she would just stay home and my dad would go in Saturday nights and they would actually get groceries and things like that. She'd say how they would do it on a Saturday night. But it was a little before my time, you know, we didn't. I remember Saturday nights still being home and watching Carol Burnett. <laughs> uh, when you were growing up, did you have ambitions that you wanted to be on a farm? That that was something, that goal, your goal in life? I didn't think I did until I left the farm. When I left for college, I missed it terribly. Then I, then I knew I really do want to get back to the farm. And then I was, I, I hated being in town and I thought I couldn't wait to be in town. And when I got there, it's one of them grass is always greener on the other side kind of things. I got there and I'm like, this isn't so great. I like the mornings of at home and the outside and the air and the birds singing and listening to a metal arc in the morning. When you're in town, you don't get to hear them kind of things. And I missed it terribly. What did you study in school? Secretary. I went to school in Bismarck for secretary, yes. And so um, I tell the story of when um, we got married in 81 and then I came home and then we put up a whole bunch of square bales of, of, square, of um, straw because we got married in August and that's combining time. So there was a lot of straw to be done. So I finished my job in Bismarck and I had one week of leeway between, I was home be before we got married and I thought, well, I'll get a week off. Well, that was not a week off because first my husband and I, we bailed some square bales here because the hayloft had to be filled. And then at home also on the farm, it was nothing but hauling square bales all week long. There was no manicures and pedicures the week before your wedding. It was all lots of bales the week before your wedding. Did you get to take a honeymoon? We did, yes, we did. The week after we went up to Glacier and down through Yellowstone, and so yes, we did. We, I'm glad we did that. We took the time off. Combining was done, so we were able to leave. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. That was one of the things the older women would talk about. The, 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 their honeymoon was like five minutes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and I'm glad we did it. Yeah. Because yeah, if we wouldn't have, we would have never just taken the time after that. So how did you meet? I don't know. He always says that he saw me in church. He would. Always, he always says how oh, he saw me in church, and I didn't really know who he was. But we also, I have a, a brother that was dating his sister, and so you know, I think we kind of met, just knew of each other through there, and then suddenly he asked me out on a date, and just after that we were always good friends until we dated more. Then so, yeah. So when you guys got married, uh, this farm was already established. No, it had set empty. This farm was setting empty, and so Dwayne had started milking on it um, like a year before we were married. His dad had purchased this land, and so um, he, with the intent then that he will move on here. And so the house was too dilapidated. We couldn't use that anymore, and so we just moved a trailer on here and slowly just kept... I've got some pictures I'll have to show you of of what the original farm looked like. It's it doesn't look anything anything like it does now. We like the trees, and that was one of our biggest draws to this farm was the trees. <laughs> so, was that was the farm in his family? No, no, it was a neighbor of theirs, and and no, years ago it was always known as the Martin Solly farm, and after he had bought it, Dwayne Felix had bought it from a man named Francis Rilling, and so um, that was. You know, it, but no, it wasn't a family member at all. So the plaque said. That's for Felix's farm. Oh, okay. okay. Yep, and all that farmstead. We've got all that farmstead. Yeah, I know. We've got still have Felix's farm up there. Also, we still you know have that yard up there and that, but you know we don't live on it. There's nobody living on it right now, but. It's still all, we own it all. So, so. you can put that sign up with peace. Yes. <laughs> yes. Why, why don't you tell me about um, your family, how many children you have, that sort of thing. And um, um, then I'll ask you a follow-up question, but tell me about that. Okay, yep. Dwayne and I, we have three kids. Our oldest, Eric, he lives down in Pierre, but he also farms with us. And he and his wife, Becky, live down in Pierre, and they have two kids, Parker and Abigail. And then our middle child is Janelle, and she's married to Justin Mossett. And they live in Bismarck, but they also um, farm, and um, he works down at the Grant County FSA office. And they have three children. They have Paxton and Stella and little Stetson, who's eight months now. And then our youngest is Alicia, and she is engaged to be married. Um, she will be getting married next summer. And so she has, um, she does her own independent accounting is what she does. She's got her own business. This is, what, what type of farm is this? What, what would you raise on this farm? We do, we have um, wheat, winter wheat, corn, sunflowers, and soybeans. And then we do our alfalfa also yet. And do you and have so, livestock? Yes, we have cow-calf pairs yet also that we calve out. So, yeah. So year-round? Year-round. There's... I always say there's always another season. It's a season of something. It's either planting or calving or harvest, but there's always another season. <laughs> what type of activities did you do and have you done on this farm? What are some of the activities you, you have done? Oh, I do. What do I? Okay. Um, you know, it's all around wherever you're needed. When you're a farm wife, it's wherever you're needed. But I've always, when we used to cut silage, I would run the cutter and Dwayne would haul and our son Derek would pack and stuff and but um I've done bailing I do a lot of the bailing over the years and um <clears throat> grain carting now before we had the grain cart at, at harvest time I used to always bring the loads home with the little we called the little red truck and now we've upgraded it used to be gravity boxes I should say we used to haul everything home with gravity boxes and the little red truck and and it was just a little red truck. And so then over the years when Dwayne bought his first semi, and it was a grain cart to put on to put the grain onto the semi. And so now I run the grain cart. And usually at combining time, the guys run the combines and we get truckers, but you know, somebody's trucking, but I usually run so the grain cart. So when you were raising your children, did you bring them along in the field? Yes, you? yes, they had to go along a lot. Um, 
we tease our son Derek that maybe he has back problem to this day because of all the laying he used to be behind the tractor. He used to sleep a lot back in there. And our youngest daughter, Alicia, also says, I remember riding with you bailing. She'd sit beside me a, long, a lot of hours and she'd, you know, say she remembers some of the songs we would play on the radio and things like that because they had to go along. What else do you do with them? And they just, they didn't know any different. Well, the other day we got pictures of, I think, all three of your grandkids. In the tractors. The tractors yeah. They do. They take them along, and they're pretty good about it. They just, yeah, they know it. Half the fun with us when the grandkids are here, Dwayne will take some or I'll take some. We divide them out. But half the fun is what's in that cooler. I always pack lunches in the cooler, and so they're digging in the cooler. That's their pastime always. <laughs> Sometimes they were in there for an hour, and the coolers are empty already. It's like, I don't know what you're going to do for the next six hours. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. well, the, other, the other part of farm work that you mentioned earlier was uh, feeding people. So why don't you talk about feeding people? I always say if you, a, a great aspect of keeping the farmers going and everything running is is the behind the scenes and feeding them is a big one you know we usually when we're busy times of the year they don't stop to eat so delivering coolers to all the tractors and finding everybody is is a big feat and you know it's an aspect that I think it's an unsung aspect that you know a lot of us women do it and you know it, it means a lot to the guys to be out there and and oh here comes the meal it's coming to them so yeah it's it, have you uh, been able to use your accounting skills um, on the farm here? We, yes, you do. You, you have to always keep records. And, you know, from what it's changed over the years, we used to sit down and we had our book and you wrote out all your transactions, the income, the expenses, everything was handwritten. And now you sit at the computer and everything gets entered. And at income tax time, it's printed out and it's it's a whole different it's the technology has changed tremendously from what it was back then does that save you a lot of time yes it really does it's and it you know it totals for you and it puts it into your category you divide decide the categories but it's it just saves a lot more of it's a lot a lot less manual work is what it is and it's more efficient also to keep it that way are, are all of your kids involved in farming they are Yes, they are all now. Um, our youngest daughter is engaged to a farmer also, and so all three of our kids will be involved in farming then. Does it make yeah. you happy? It does, yes, because I hope to see a nice future in farming for them. I mean, there's some years where it's definitely not as good as other years are, but they've all grown up to like the atmosphere of it, and they always wanted to get into that. And like I said, I think that's like with me, once you left the farm, then you realize that, oh, it was, it's better back there. <laughs> when we uh, talk to a number of people, they talk about what they like about farming is the lifestyle. Could you talk about the lifestyle of farming? You know, it, it, it's, it's different all the time, the lifestyle of farming. It, it's, you have your busy season. We always say we work hard and we play hard. You know, it's one of the things that, that happens with farming. You've got your seasons and you're going to be busy and tension will be there. There is no doubt tension will be there, but it, it's all worth it in the end because you get to work together and you just it's just a whole different kind of a lifestyle you, than, than any other kind of a job. I can't imagine, you know, all going your separate ways in the morning and only seeing each other at night. You know, we see each other throughout the day and you just learn, like I said, some days aren't always as good as other days, but you, you know, it's just a whole different kind of a lifestyle. What about the pressures? You talked a little bit or alluded to it that there are pressures, you know, market related, that sort of thing. But you, you have a son, maybe, maybe, even, maybe even son in laws that want to be, become far, farmers. What are the obstacles that they face? Be becoming farmers. What, what, how, does, how does that happen? What's the process? And I th getting into it, I think, is probably one of the hardest things is getting established. And, and you know, our son is fortunate that we are here and he can always ease into it. And, and But he also has a side job also, which unfortunately with farming, that's common now. Our son-in-law is the same way. You know, it's, it's an obstacle that you can't just jump into farming and expect to make money and unfortunately it takes two 
to, to ease into it, it takes another job to help you to, to get established and into it. And so those are obstacles that they face and they, you know, it keeps them very busy because farming is busy and plus their other jobs are busy. And so, but they are diligent at it and they do well at it. As a mom and dad, do you feel some pressure though about, uh, we want to help, help, you know, our son, but it also means that we might have another family that has to be supported by this farm as well? Exactly. And that it is, it is, you know, to, to help them to get established, we have just added acres to make it enough for, for two families, you know, is what you end up doing. You, you pick up more workload, you know, but that's what you do to bring them into it. You know, it just, you, you add more, more work, but um, that's the only way it will work to bring them into it instead of dividing what you've got in half. What if you don't have a family? Do you think that, that it's even feasible to try to become a farmer? That would be a tough one. I, I can't imagine if, I, I'm sure there are, I'm sure there are farmers out there that young guys that have started or young couples that have started without a parent to get them into it, but it would be really hard to to not have a family member to help you with. Yeah, the cost of land and machinery on top of it. Yep, yep, yeah, it is. It's not not easy to just go into that. Yeah. So, a family like yours, how how do you plan for retirement? Or is a retirement? <laughs> we get asked that, but we that, that's so far off for right now. I don't know how we'll plan for. For the future down the road. For now, we take things day by day, and there's just so many unknowns of where we would retire or what will happen down the road. Do you yeah. ever see a day when you guys will sell the farm and move into town? Yes, I don't know where we'll move. We always say that we don't know where we'll leave, but there will be a day where we're going to hand the reins over. Absolutely, and we look forward to that, where we can still come and help, but it's not our responsibility. Then it'll be you tell that we can tell them, you tell us what you need us to do. <laughs> and, and But it'll be nice to have that down the road. But yeah, we, we, we definitely look forward to that. We will hand it over. Well, I know that over the years you've worked at the Hay Cafe, maybe some other places. Do you think it, it's pretty common or, or even necessary for a farm wife nowadays to have a job or, or for the husband to have a, a, a job? Um, especially for the younger ones, I think it is, you know, that's why I say it's, it's unfortunate that they do have to do that to, to make ends meet that. And I think one of the biggest downfalls with farming and being our own is, um, the health insurance, health insurance is huge. And I wish there were a system that we could get, you know, help us, you know, to get a, a decent price of a plan. But when you're independent, you know, the health insurance is what kills so many of us. It's like, wow, that's a big bill each month that if you can have a job that helps cover that, it's tremendous. That's, it's just takes you so far. When you look at uh, your life in farming, do you see it as a partnership between yourself and your husband? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it is. It, it just has to be that way. You just, that's the only way it really works is it's a partnership. It's got to be the two of you and you need to be on the same page. And we were talking to someone yesterday, and she was talking about the fact that um, one of the things that has bothered her is that when people talk about the farm, they always talk about it as being the husband's farm as opposed to being the family farm. Mm -hmm. Have you gone through that at all? Oh, of course. Yes, of course. You know, and then it, it'll be, you know, Dwayne's fields or Dwayne's, and, and they are. I mean, he does, you know, most of that decisions anyway. But, um, but it's, I, I can see where she says that it should be a couple because it is a couple doing it. It's not just the, the man's farm, you know, it's, and, and I, I guess it probably would be that way for some of the women that aren't involved in the farm. If you have an off the farm job and you don't really pay attention to it, I can see how that would happen. But, you know, here it's just never been that way. You both are hands on all the time. Why don't, why don't we talk about uh, your view on how the role of women has changed in agriculture, even in, in your through your own eyes, from your mother or grandmother to where you are today, and maybe even, mm -hmm. even your daughter. Yeah. Yes, my mom says that how the roles have changed when I'll tell her, I've got to get home, we've got bailing to do, or I'm going to haul. And she always says, that's something I never would have done. 
she didn't, you know, bail or do that kind of stuff. Where now it's, you know, yeah, it, it, the role has definitely progressed to, and it's not like it's such terrible physical work. It's just things that we've just evolved into doing. And and um, like I said back then, um, mom didn't help tremendously with the field work, but she had nine kids at home too. You can't leave, you know, there was always a little one. And um, so for her, the field work wasn't done like it is, you know, like she always says, I wouldn't, wouldn't have gone out to do that kind of stuff. She left that up to dad. But she and cooked a lot. I she guess. cooked a lot. She was a tremendous cook, still is, but yeah, she, she didn't, you know, go out to do things like field work as much as, you know, whereas now Dwayne's mom, Katie did things like that. She, you know, was swathed. She swathed all the grain down all the time. That was just her role. She always did all the swathing and help hauling. So, but, um, and back then also, like we talked, the butchering chickens, and they were so consumed with chores of that sort to do every day that they needed to do. And, um, and now, you know, my role, I, I always tease that I mow lawn, you know, that's, that keeps you busy. There's always lawn mowing. We've got a tremendous lawn where growing up, we didn't own a lawn mower. The cows walked around the yard and that's just how it was. That would have been a waste of all that grass to, to mow it. The cows were the mowers back then. So, yeah. What do your daughters do? Did your daughters talk to you at all about the when they were growing up that they'd like to be on a farm? Yes, not even growing up as much as they do now. You know, as they, as they left home also, they, then they would come back and they'd look across the yard and they always, say, they always say, you set the bar really high here. This is where we want to be back to, something like this. Because after having it, they do definitely want to go back to the farm. It is something that, that, you know, we hear, as we mentioned, that there is a different perspective when you grow up on a farm. And then it seems like either you want to get far, far away or you want to stay. Right. And it is. And, and I am surprised when they started slowly saying that, nope, they would like to get back to the farm. I didn't think that because some days aren't always so pleasant. <laughs> and I just thought they would, you know, maybe veer the other direction. But all three of them have all wanted to come back to the farm. How do you get through the days that aren't so pleasant? Oh, you grin and bear it. <laughs> you grin and bear it. Yeah, you just, that's, and there's lots of days like that, but um, you know it'll be, it'll be better. Yeah, just tensions run high and it's just, everything just needs to be efficient and go. And you know, like I said, we work hard and we play hard. So you just battle through it and Times will come when things ease off again. Do you think you have to be an optimist? Oh, of course you do. And and your faith has to be very high. You start the day with your faith and you end the day with your faith. That's what gets you through a day. You just you need to you need someone at your side. <laughs> that's that's always rooting for you. <laughs> well, I'm done unless you have something else. Like you maybe with a pick. Oh, we didn't talk about technology by itself. Right. Okay. So why don't you tell me how um, you've seen technology change over the years and how it's helped you well, on the farm as well as personally. Okay. Um, we have definitely, um, when I look at how we used to haul square bales and now we do all the baling and we actually had a tractor built for the baler that we are 7930 and we went down to Iowa and we watched the tractor being built. If, it's like, if this isn't technology, wow. We, it started with just the frame of the tractor and we followed it through and we even got to put our signatures inside the hood. And so it's like, wow, this is technology has sure evolved over, you know, from our old square balers. And now we tractor and baler, we watch the tractor actually being built. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So have you seen the evolution of, um, uh, tractors, let's say, where they're more GPS driven and computers are coming into them. Oh, yes. Our, everything we've got, the tractors, the combines, everything, it's all, everything's on your screen, you know, that you touch the screens and there it goes for you. you know, that, yeah. So has that allowed you to um, uh, manage more land or is it cut down on how much time 
to spend or both? Both, actually. It, it, it just makes everything more efficient. They, they farm, I mean, everything is so prescription now of what's put in the ground. When they, seeding, everything is prescription. It's done just, you know, so much fertilizer here that it needs it, so much seed and less for here. It just, it's all computerized and it's prescription actually is what they call it, how it goes into the ground. Yeah, pretty efficient. Of course, all that technology costs money too. That's right. I would, when, if we would tell our ancestors what the equipment costs now, they would think, well, you're out of your mind. <laughs> and it does. It doesn't come cheap. Technology is expensive, but you just got to roll with it and stay ahead of it and keep, keep trading when you can trade to get your money out of what you got if you need to upgrade. And yeah, it's just a, it's definitely a whole system. So what would you tell, it doesn't have to be your child, what would you tell any woman that might come to you and talk to you about farming and why farming life is such a such a good life? It's an admirable job. It's it's very admirable because you're feeding people and you can be proud of what you do. Um, it's hard work, but it's to me it's an admirable job, admirable job for somebody to do.